Hi, welcome, welcome to yet another episode under the webinar series of Get More from Malapram. And this episode, we are, we are actually doing this webinar is only to provide the clarity such that you will have confidence on whatever the policies that you are purchasing. Okay. It, it could be like a, a, a policy which you have already purchased or it could be the policy which you are planning to purchase. Okay. So the, the, the entire, entire episode has been designed only to give you the clarity and confidence on what are the policies that you have already have. Okay. And um, with this, uh, let, let us just uh, get into uh, uh, the declarations before we get into the topic of the day. That is, we do not represent any insurance company, nor we are going to promote a particular product of any insurance company in this webinar series of Get More from Malapuram. At the same time, we will be discussing issues related only, only which is related to insurance. No politics, no movies, nothing. It is only insurance in this particular webinar series of Get More from Malapuram. Okay. And at the same time, we are not intended to criticize a particular uh, uh, company or a product or any particular person uh, in this particular webinar. If, if in case it just happens, it is only by chance, but it is not planned or intentionally done. So that's the declaration which we want to do. Along with that, what are the points that we are going to discuss here is absolutely personal. And none of these things can be taken as an evidence under any court of law. So with these declarations, let us now come to today's topic of the day. The top three mistakes, the top three mistakes which the business owners do while they are purchasing their fire insurance for their company. Again, this is, this is the topic of the day and the agenda for the entire um, uh, webinar series is going to be like this. We are going to discuss the situation analysis. Then we are going to do a discussion on the, uh, the clarity for confidence. So this is the main uh, section of the entire video. And then we are going to conclude it. And then we are going to come with the action points. Now, at the end of this webinar, you will have absolutely clear cut clarity on how to arrive at the sum assured for your fire policy of your business. How to arrive at the sum insured for your business insurance fire policy. Number one, you will have absolutely very clear clarity on that. Second thing, how not to fall into the traps of the bankers who are, who are trying to give you the policy, rather looking at the insurance policy on how best you can have the coverage in place. Okay. The third thing is you will have a clarity on what are the warranties and guarantees and the conditions which have been laid out into your policy, how to understand and how best you can customize them to have a right kind of policy for yourself. At the same time, by the end of this webinar, you'll have very clear clarity on what is the right premium that you have to pay for a right coverage, which can cover yourself and your business in case of any eventuality. I hope this is this is okay. Shall we have it okay to go ahead? Just type in okay in your chat box. Okay, okay, okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. With that, let's get into the uh, situation analysis stuff. If you look at the situation analysis here, right? Okay. Uh, when when do we normally go for any situation? Uh, when do we normally think of actually having an insurance policy for the business? 90% of the situations, 90% of the situations when we actually go out for a loan with the banker, the banker will say to sanction this particular loan, you need to have a particular fire insurance policy. Um, unless uh, you have the policy, we can't issue the loan. That's when, that's when most of the businesses, they want to go for a fire insurance policy. And now, so that's the reason. Uh, so it's when the bankers ask for, or when a new investor who is coming into your business and he will also ask for a new partners for coming in, he will also ask for, do you have any insurance policy in place? Okay, there are two situations wherein we think of insurance. But when we think of insurance, we also think of paying always less premium. 
pay less premium but have more coverage. This is the mindset. There is nothing wrong with the mindset. Okay, paying less premium for a larger coverage, right? This is what most of the business owners we all think like that. Okay, so this is the mindset what we are in, and we whenever there is any loss. We always feel like insurance company will not pay the entire money, so we exaggerate the claim. If there's an X amount of claim which has happened, we'll put at least three X or five X times of that as a claim, thinking that any which way insurance company is going to deduct the money, and we'll get the right amount of money from them. This is the mindset, and let me just tell you the fact: there is no less premium to be paid for a greater coverage. There is always there is always a right premium which need to be paid for a right coverage so that you will have right to have the entire claim processed and paid by the insurance company. I hope this is clear. Okay, there is there is always there is always a right premium which need to be paid for a right kind of coverage which need to be there for the right amount of full. Payment which we, you need to receive from the insurance company. So there is no least premium. There is no high coverage for the less premium. Nothing like that. It doesn't work out in insurance. Okay. Let's see how it is in the webinar. Right. So coming to the situation analysis, we have we have seen that, and most of us, most of the business owners, we are not clear. We are not clear on what are the kind of warranties. What are the kind of conditions? What are the kind of exclusions which are there under the policy? It's only it's only like you know, we just pay the premium, we got a copy, we just gave it to the banker and get the loan. That's it, and we are paying the loan. The banker is just taking care of the renewal of the policy on a consistent basis. I don't see like you no know, banker is at fault. No, do we know what exactly is covered under those policies? Let's analyze that. Let's analyze that, and there lies there lies uh, the real reason how people look for the clarity for confidence. And this is the section under which we discuss all these points. We discuss all these points such that you will have clarity for confidence on what are the policies that you have are planning to purchase. And let's look into this. Okay, let's dive a little deep into these top three mistakes. Number one mistake. Number one mistake. What the business owner does while purchasing their fire insurance policy is they depend on the banker. They depend on the banker to decide on the sum assured. They just depend on the banker. So they just, see normally I'll just tell you what just happens. We we go out for a working capital loan or a or a um, or a uh, we are purchasing a asset. So a missionary, a new missionary, or an important missionary, and we want to have a loan on that. Okay, so the banker will say only one thing. He will say, "Okay, fine. You have applied for a five crores of, uh, I say, uh, working capital loan." He will say, "I will insure. I want an insurance policy for that five crores worth of stock." Because he is giving it to, to the working capital. So only his intention is only to cover the stock because he is actually giving the finance to him only for the stock, right? Okay, let's let's go a little more deeper into it. Okay, so depending on the banker, it's actually a fault, a mistake from the business owner, and banker suggesting something is is according to his uh, focus. What what is the focus on which he is looking at? The focus of a banker is to give you the finance for your assets. It's a financial assistance he wants to provide, and at the same time, his interest is only to cover the assets for which he has given the finance. So he is very right. He is very right in his approach. Okay. Now, what is the impact of this? The impact of this is seen when there is a claim. You know what happens when there is a claim? As absolutely under insurance, like probably the entire value of your uh, total assets is not taken into the policy, or only a part of the entire organization is actually taken under ins insurance cover by the bank. Either it is an under insurance, or it is a part insurance which is going to happen. Now let's check how is this going to happen. Okay, let's take a case study. Let's take a case study. This is actually a live case study which has uh, happened uh, with us, and uh, but we have actually changed a little bit uh, 
because we don't want to reveal our uh, client's uh, identity in this. Okay, so uh, the case study goes like this. There is there is a mattress uh, manufacturing company and they got uh, uh, three separate units. Like uh, there's a unit one wherein the coil manufacturing happens, then the foam manufacturing and then the foam sheet manufacturing. So the three units which uh, they have actually built up and then they also have uh, they, they also have a uh, uh, separate uh, uh, section for the entire go down wherein it's not just the go down but they cut these mattresses and they pre uh, they cut this foam and then they, they actually prepare the entire mattress okay the fire and everything they just put layer by layer and then they prepare the entire mattress okay they also put the cloth the designing the stitching everything happens there okay so that's the third that the fourth block which they have and uh, they also have a boundary wall and a separate uh, section, a separate construction for the workers' quarters. So the, all the employees who work in the production area, they all stay there. So they have a separate quarters for all the employees out there. And the entire uh, area is being surrounded by the compound wall. So this, this, is, a, this is a small, neat uh, case, right? Now, let's look into the, to the entire picture on how it looks, okay? So this, this is supposed to be an entire area where it has been covered by the boundary wall, right? And uh, then uh, uh, we have the unit one out here, then we have unit two on the other side, and then we have the unit three in between. Then we have the entire the go down and the packing uh, which happens in that area, that's in the middle. And then we have uh, the employee uh, quarters which is there at the end, okay, the, the top right, uh, the left corner. Okay, so uh, you see, you see out there. Okay, so what happened? There, there was an. Uh, this is a live case which happened. Uh, there was a storm which has come up, and then a rain and a full blow of wind, and an employee over there has actually shooted the entire uh, situation when it was actually happening. So the, the just wind has just come in. There was a huge rain which has come in, and this was in the early morning. This was during the morning hours. So it is not in the night or in the early morning, it was in the morning hours. And all the employees were actually working in the uh, plant, in the manufacturing unit. Okay. So uh, when this actually happened, uh, what, uh, the, the, the boundary wall which is out there, okay, the boundary wall which is out there on that uh, corner, it got damaged. This boundary wall has fallen onto the employee quarters. When it fell onto the employee quarters, even the employee quarters got damaged. Okay, so the entire damage happened to the boundary wall and then the employee quarters. Okay, so this when it happened, uh, we got the information and uh, um, we have been asked uh, by one of our, um, uh, our existing client uh, to actually help them out because this is his friend's uh, unit. So he just asked me to whether you, you can go and help them. I said, fine, let, let me just go and look through the process. When I actually went there and uh, saw the entire uh, situation, and after that, we, we also got even the, the entire, uh, uh, the policy documents in place. When I actually checked through the entire policy documents, that was, that was a shocker. That was a complete shocker. You know why? The shocker was, the facts which I found through the policy copies are, there are three insurance policies which is given to this particular uh, uh, factor. Three policies. How come it is three policies? One policy was covering only that, uh, uh, the, the unit number one. The second policy was covering only unit number two. The third policy was covering unit number three and the uh, go down block. Okay. So there are three different insurance uh, policies in the same company and which is done for different, different, different assets. Okay. Uh, assets. Okay. Why? Because when they first started, the unit one was uh, the banker. The banker was different and he funded it. So he has actually taken the policy on that. The second and third was done with another banker because he gave the loan. So he actually insured the other three blocks. That is unit number two, three and uh, the go down. Okay. So two, insurance, two bankers have done it through different insurance companies. So two insurance companies were involved and there were three insurance policies which, which were given. Okay. Right. So this, this, is, this, this actually leads to some more complexity. You know, the, 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 the hardest fact is the damage which has actually happened, that is to the employee quarters and the boundary wall, is never covered in any of these three policies. This is the iron. This is the hardest fact. 
and we we uh, there was a little damage of some windows and things like that in the unit number one and there was a small breakage of chimney in unit number one and uh, but it was it was less than the deductible amount so it is any which way it is not paid when the surveyors the two surveyors have come in from two different insurance companies they surveyed everything and at the end when we have seen the coverage the damage thing which has actually happened is never covered under the policies. How do you think an insurance company can pay it to the business owner if the claim is not payable at all? Okay, so it's cross lender insured because uh, the unit number one they actually insured it because um, out of uh, out of the entire uh, value of the asset of uh, I think it was uh, it was close to around uh, fifteen crores value the unit one out of which the banker has actually funded only three crores so he insured the entire unit one for only three crores and that was six years back because he he just gave some funding for the machinery so he just insured only to that extent right. So this, this, this grossly underinsured bank is right from his friend because he has funded it to only that particular asset or that particular purpose and he just insured only to that extent. He is not interested or he's, he, has, he doesn't have the comprehensive idea of how to cover the entire, sub, entire factory. Okay, now that has actually, so there's a grossly under insurance and the employee's quarter itself is not insured by anyone. Because none of them has given any loan or any funding for that. Now, do you see, do you see in this particular situation, how will the business owner think? He will feel helpless. Why did paid all these policies for seven years? And at the end, when something is happening, I'm not getting anything out of it. In the employee quarters and everything, I think he spent almost close to around 25 lakh in constructing the boundary wall and then the entire uh, the employee quarters again. Can anybody give that back to the business owner? No? Okay. So depending on, depending on the banker is good only from his perspective, only to his interest, not from your entire business perspective. So have a correct idea on whether you are covering the entire assets or not. There lies the first mistake. Don't just depend. Don't just depend on your bankers alone. See whether every asset of your company is also covered or not. Okay. Now let's go. Let's go to the second mistake. Are you ready? If you're ready, just type in yes in the chat box. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And if you if you actually look into the second mistake over here, right? The second mistake is declaration of your assets value. How are you or on what basis are you declaring your assets value to the insurance company? There lies the second mistake. You know why? Why call it as a mistake? Because if you look into most of the times, most of the times, if in order to declare the value to the insurance companies, we always tend to depend on our accounts or on our balance sheet to see what is the value which is mentioned out there. This is not normally any business owner who does, right? And but just let's go a little deep into that. If you are if you are actually depending, if you are actually depending on your balance sheet or the values which are given by your accountant in declaring the sum assured under your insurance policy, just think about this. Are they the right replacement value or they're only the market value? Let me give you a little more uh, uh, details on that. Replacement value means if say any uh, asset is damaged, we are going to replace this asset with a new asset. The asset which is damaged is getting replaced with a new asset. It's called replacement. And when you are replacing it with a new asset, then the value what you're going to pay is not just the market value, it is the real current cost of that particular asset. Am I right? So if you are actually declaring the value on the depreciated value front, if you are declaring it by taking care of your balance sheet and the depreciated values, then you are actually not covering your entire insurance. You're not covering your entire risk because if the risk happens, 
then you have to replace with a new asset okay there lies there lies the real reason why an asset valuation the declaration of your value of your assets should never be on your balance sheet basis it should be always on your market market purchase basis that is reinstatement replacement value basis okay right and so never ever consider the depreciated values how is that going to impact how is that going to impact even if i take a market value or a depreciated value how is it going to impact me if there is a claim if there is a claim then it will impact by means of under insurance it will impact by means of under insurance what does that mean it means it means let's let's take a case study which gives you a perfect clarity uh, about how this under insurance works out okay right so uh, um, this is a case study this is also a life case study and uh, uh, in this uh, situation we actually gave a right direction to the business owner on how to actually coverage and he actually did all those changes in us uh, uh, policies okay so this is a plastic uh, products manufacturing company this was a 30 year old company this was a 30 year old company and uh, the client uh, with whom i just interacted he actually purchased this asset 2 years back 2 years back he purchased when he purchased it was 30 year old company uh, so now it is 32 year old company and he purchased this entire uh, factory for 20 crores and out of this 20 crores when he purchased 5 crores was his land value so he actually insured the entire company for 15 crores with an insurance company okay and when we actually asked him when we actually asked him like um what what is the real value along with the boundary wall if you have to actually construct the entire uh, plant once again with all the new materials new equipment new manufacturing setup how much it's going to cost Do you know what was his answer? His answer was, "It will be costing him hundred crores. How much? Hundred crores. So you see, a hundred crore of replacement value has been insured for only fifteen crores. Say suppose, say suppose if there is any claim which happens, okay? And if there is any claim which happens, and the claim, and in that unfortunate fire accident, right?" There's an initial estimated loss of two crores. If that happens, okay. There's a two crores of loss which happened because of a fire accident. What is that going to be? Let's see the calculations, okay. Now, two crores is the loss, the initial estimated loss, okay. But now, if you look into the entire situation, right, the total value of twenty crores is what he has invested. Five crores is the land value. So fifteen crores is the market value. Okay, then he insured it for fifteen crores. This is the case study what we thought. Now there is a loss. Now the reinstatement value, the reinstatement value. If you look at the entire thing is hundred crores. So how much is the under insurance here? Eighty five percent. Eighty five percent under insurance in this case. Because hundred crores value, you have actually covered it only for fifteen crores. That means eighty-five crores is under insurance. Got it? Okay. Under insurance is always self-insurance. You are not transferred that risk to the insurance company. Rather, you are putting it onto yourself. Now, in the event of claim, they just paid only how much? How much? Thirty-seven lakhs fifty thousand only. This is actually a loss of estimated loss was two crores. And they got paid only thirty-seven lakhs fifty thousand. That's it. Why? Why? It's a claim of two crores, thirty-seven lakhs. Huge gap. Why? When we actually went through the details, the reinstatement cost of the entire loss, which actually happened, it, it is actually not just two crores. It is actually two crores seventy-five lakhs. Because the estimates can go here and there. It's still okay. The real cost, which even the uh, the surveyor has actually ascertained, was two crores seventy five lakhs. Okay, out of which, out of which, there's a minimum excess of five lakh rupees under the policy. That means up to five lakh rupees of initial claim, insurance company will not pay. Over and above five lakhs is what is going to be 
paid by the insurance company okay so they paid the uh, so there is a, there is an uh, uh, excess of uh, 5 lakhs and there is also a scrap which got generated the salvage which got generated and that salvage value um, uh, the scrap value which the client himself was actually said uh, he will take up the scrap on to himself right so uh, the valuation has come to 20 lakh rupees so they have also even removed that 20 lakh rupees from the amount of uh, payable uh, claim okay by removing this 5 lakhs and 20 lakhs the total payable amount under this claim was 2 crores 50 lakh rupees 2 crores 75 lakh rupees is the real replacement the real repairing cost and the reinstatement uh, cost which has actually happened out of which 25 lakhs has been removed right and then the remaining amount is 2 crores 50 lakhs which is actually payable now but how much is really paid 37 lakhs 50,000 how come 2.5 has become 37 lakhs 50,000 it's only because of under insurance there's an under insurance of how much percentage 85 percent 85 percent in this case is accounting to 2 crores 12 lakhs 50,000 rupees it is 2 crores 12 lakhs 50,000 rupees he just lost which he was supposed to be paid by the insurance company he just lost it because he did not insure it completely and how much he got paid just 37 lakhs 50,000 probably to insure the entire sum issued up to 100 crores he would have paid another one and a half lakh rupees extra if even if he would have paid one and a half lakh rupees extra and still how much he would have got 2 crores 12 lakhs 50,000 rupees. Do you think paying that additional 1.5 lakh rupee is, is really a more premium when compared to what, what, what's the opportunity he has actually lost? That's the reason. That's the reason we always say. We always say that pay a rightful premium such that you will have every right to recover the every damage which happened to your factory, to your company when there is a claim in the unfortunate event happening okay i hope this is clear if you are if you are going for any under insurance let me just tell you if you are going for any under insurance under insurance is nothing but it's a self assurance that the insurance is taken care by ourselves not by the insurance company I hope this, this gives a lot of clarity. Underinsuring your company means you are self-assuring. You are self-assuring that you are taking the entire underinsurance onto yourself, not to the insurance company. Pay the right premium. Go for full insurance and have a rightful thing in getting your entire claim from the insurance company. It is easier, it is easier for any insurance company to pay the claim in a rightful way if you pay the rightful premium and have a right amount of coverage for your company. I hope this gives you a lot of clarity. You want any details on that? You want any more details on how to actually find out the right value? Please do call me and my team. This, this number which is mentioned out there is 7569. 645 645 this is the number on which just give give us a missed call we'll be all out there to help you out in finding the right amount of sum issued for yourself and your business i hope this is clear so this comes to the end of the second mistake that's the under insurance which is which has been declared to the insurance company okay now let's come to the third mistake the third most important mistake is we just ignore, we just ignore the warranties, the conditions of coverage and the exclusions which are inbuilt into your policy. And there lies the real reason why, though there is a claim, the insurance company is not paying. We say like, no, we, we, paid, we, we paid every amount to the insurance company, whatever they ask, but when there's a claim, they're not giving us. This happens because we ignored, we just ignored the warranties and the conditions which have been mentioned onto the policy. 
Okay, let's go a little more deeper into that. Okay, now the warranties and guarantees. If you look at the first warranties, there is nil claims in the last in the past three years. There is something which is always mentioned in almost all the policies, all the corporate policies. Just declare it. We just we just give that information. We also even think if I say there is a claim, insurance company might increase the premium. Let them increase the premium. That's the right premium. Because if you pay the right premium, only then you have every right to get the claim if the claim were to happen. You don't pay the right premium, you want to pay the less premium. How can you expect the right claim payment from the insurance company? You exercise your right properly. The insurance company is always there to exercise their right of paying the rightful claim. Okay. So nil claims, if there is any claim, please do mention it with the insurance company. Never, ever, never, ever withhold such kind of information. Okay, it's for your benefit, it's for your company benefit to have the right coverage in place and with the rightful premium. Okay, and policies do not cover any kacha construction. This we have seen in most of these uh, seasonal uh, companies. But in uh, there's a peak season which comes up. So in the peak season, there's a huge uh, volume of turnover which is happening, and there's a lot of um, the, the the raw material which comes in. So they doesn't have the entire storage capacity. So what they do? Just for the season, they actually just construct a kacha uh, storage uh, building, or they they transfer a part of the manufacturing into a kacha uh, house, uh, and then uh, they they actually do the entire process. Now, whenever such kind of things are happening. There is always a chance. There is always a chance of the fire accidents happening, and when that kind of fire accidents happens, happens, and there's a huge stock like it's it's a peak season which is going on, right? So a huge stock which is lying out there. There's a huge claim which can happen. You know, though the claim is actually payable, but because of this particular warrant which is inbuilt, and because the accident happened in a place where there's a kacha construction is being used. The claim is not payable because in kacha construction, what happens? The the electrical lines are not correct, or probably they just gave some extension uh, uh, extension out there. They're putting the open wires into the uh, into the socket, and they're using the entire uh, uh, electricity. There's always a chance of sparks coming up, right? It's not safety. It's not safe. And in those conditions, if there's a claim, the insurance company will not pay the claim. Okay, and then let let us also even look into the third uh, warranty that is contents kept in the basement or not kept. Okay, we have seen we have seen in few uh, situations wherein in the basement they are actually having a kitchen, kitchen and in a small uh, pantry kind of thing uh, wherein you know people they have their lunch. Kitchen in the basement, is it safe? And I also seen a quality lab in the basement, laundry in a basement wherein some some chemicals are there, and we could also even see a, uh, the fumes coming out of that particular working place. And in the policy, it is very clearly written: the basement exposure is not covered. So contents, the process which happens in the basement, is never covered. And if at all we have to run anything in the basement, which is not so hazardous to have it in place. It could be an accounts people sitting in the basement. That's fine, okay. But that condition need to be need to be waived off. It need to be removed from the policy, and that is quite possible. We can actually pass an endorsement, and all the insurance companies are willing to pass an endorsement, and uh, they might charge a little more premium extra. But still, it's worth it. It's worth it to pay that premium and have the coverage in place. Okay, so the contents which are uh, which are kept in the basement are not covered. We also have another one. contents kept outside the boundary wall or in the open uh, uh, place are not covered. This I, I still remember that there, there was a claim which happened wherein uh, it's it's in a ginning mill, and then the cotton has come as a raw material. It has just come to the uh, uh, dock, uh, the to the manufacturing plant, and then. Uh, uh the 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 lorry uh, the the lorry people have just unloaded everything uh, in the place and uh, because there was some more uh, material which is out there in the godown there was no space 
So the entire bales were kept in the open yard. That was a bit of the summer. Suddenly there was a rain. It was never ever expected that there could be a rain. That too in summer. Sometimes it just happens. And the entire stock got drenched. You know what, what client has done? He's actually taken out that bales, put it into the stock, uh, it is uh, storage, uh, go down. And then he intimated a claim stating that uh, uh, the lorry people, when they came the, with the bales, uh, it was already in a damp condition. Now, if, if, uh, it's so easy for the insurance company to find out whether you are saying it right or wrong. If there would have been a loss like that, the, ins the, the lorry person, the driver would have actually written on the LC copy and the back side of the LC copy that it has been, goods have been delivered in a uh, bad condition and this is what has happened. Nothing, no such things have been there. And moreover, moreover, the transit was not covered under the policy. There was no insurance for the transit. Do you think the claim is payable under such conditions? No, it is never payable. But if at all those kind of situations has to happen and we need to have such kind of coverages, pay some additional premium to the insurance company, get these warranties waived off. It can be endorsed. Need any help? We are always there. Just dial up this number 7569-645-645. Me and my team, we are always there to help you out. Okay. And then we'll also see uh, this, this is something which is out there in all the five policies. There is a firefighting and an, uh, a sprinkler systems which are being installed, maintained and operational at all times. Now, this, this is something which is, uh, which is so important because I've seen many of the, many of the manufacturing units, uh, they, have, they do have uh, the fire extinguishers in place, but it is never maintained because all these fire extinguishers have to be maintained at least uh, um, there, there's a renewal date kind of thing. So every year, the if it is given on an AMC, they come, they refill it, they increase that pressure into the cylinder because unless the pressure is there in the cylinder, if you open up, the, the entire entire content should just come out. It is not coming out, you just opened it. This, there's no fun in having a fire extinguisher there. So whenever, whenever any incident happen, any accident happening, these are the things which the surveyor look into. They look in whether those fire extinguishers are there in the location. If it is there, whether they are, when did they renewed it? And is the pressure gauge is, is up or there is no pressure in the cylinder? Is it a used cylinder or is it a new cylinder? So they check all these things and one, one mistake, one mistake it is found. The entire claim is not payable at all. Right? Okay. I hope I hope this is this is giving you a lot of clarity. If yes, just just type in yes in the chat box. Just just type in yes in the chat box. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. You, you have been so nice uh, on this webinar, and uh, I, I've seen many of you people coming to the webinars on a regular basis. And I thank you a lot for such a kind of support what you people are extending to us. Thanks a lot. Okay. Right. So let us see few more uh, warranties which, which, which are there uh, um, under the fire insurance policies. This is 24 by 7. 24 by 7 security at the location. And especially when the burglary coverages, such kind of things are there. Burglary, tap kind of coverages in your uh, uh, policy, in your business policy. And you say, yes, there is a 24 by 7 security, but there is no security for 24 hours. It is only for two shifts. In the night, there are no, there is no security. Such kind of things are there. Get these warranties waived off. Pay that additional premium. Pay that rightful additional premium and get the rightful coverage. Okay. And industrial grade electrical fittings are installed. This, this is another warranty. I've seen, I've seen to my knowledge. Okay. And I want to be really wrong on this. 90% of the people, they don't go for the industrial grade. Unless, unless there is an international standards which need to be maintained for their client to purchase their product. This is a fact. This is a fact. Okay. And these warranties are there within the policy. You are using a normal uh, uh, house home grade uh, uh, switches and electrical wires in the 
um, manufacturing unit, and especially in the pharma kind of companies, how do you expect an insurance company to give you a claim? It is never ever payable. Right? Okay. Now, a regular maintenance and standard usage of machinery. I have a classical case here. It, it, it's, it's actually an hospital which was actually using a particular machinery. And it's a diagnostic tool, diagnostic and treatment tool. Um, it's a huge cost machinery. And we have actually insured the entire uh, um, hospital and the equipments which are there. And this, this equipment which they use almost 24 by 7 without any halt. And they also even maintain all the, you know, the repairing parts, everything, they also maintain it parallelly. There's a, a two shift uh, maintenance person who's also there. Okay. So they, they, they actually make a lot of money on this particular machine. The machine was supposed to be used only on 100 patients per day. And it has to be kept on uh, for, um, uh, maintenance activity for another three, four hours. And then uh, it can be used again. But this hospital, they use that machinery on 24 by 7 basis without any break in between. How do you expect a machine to work like that? Even though it is a machinery, right? It's, it's a very important machinery. Then regular breakdown which happens to that particular machine because they're just using it. They, you know, they use it on almost more than 450 patients on a daily basis. So the average is 450. Sometimes it even touches 700 people, right? It's not used on a proper standard usage conditions. The claim happens, why will the insurance company will pay? They will not pay. Okay, if you want to be paid, this condition should be waived off. And that comes with a cost. It's cost, pay that money, get it waived off. Okay, right, got it? Okay, now. Company is in an elevated position from the main main road to ground level. Many situations, even they the, the, the ground level itself is low. It's probably the, the height of the road got increased later on, a year after year. And then after that, there is also a basement exposure in this particular company. So there's a huge, huge inundation of water which can happen. And uh, the entire floor, the entire base uh, uh, exposure can be completely covered with water. We got one incident which happened uh, in one of the factory wherein it was in a little down, uh, low level area. So the entire water due to rains was just coming and flowing through their uh, compound wall. It's just going by the compound. And because of this continuous water coming in, the compound wall just fell and the entire water has come into the uh, uh, factory. It damaged the entire uh, stock, the machinery. It's a little pharmaceutical kind of company, and a lot of chemical got drenched and it, it just dissolved into the water and it just went off. Now, how do you think? How do you think the insurance company can should pay that particular claim? Your level of your ground itself is low when, when compared to the uh, the main road. So any which way it is coming up, right? So the claim was not payable. If it has to be done, these conditions need to be waived off and it comes with a cost. Then all stock is stored in a permanent godown. Peak stock, peak uh, season, the stock might need to be kept even in open condition, right? If it is in open condition, it is a self-insurance. You are insuring yourself. None of the insurance companies are going to give the coverage. Okay. Fire brigade is located within five kilometers. If it is not get it waived off pay that additional premium but get it waived off get it endorsed in your policies okay and there are a few add-on covers which can be given uh, under the policy like uh, earthquake uh, storm tempest flood and inundation right and then a uh, terrorism uh, can be covered and the spontaneous combustion can be covered the impact damage due to own vehicle or from the surrounding side, if it happens, all this can be covered. That, but that all comes on the add-on. Probably on an add-ons in the fire policy, we'll we'll go with a separate webinar on that. But the top three mistakes, uh, uh, which which can actually happen under any of these uh, policies, are 
uh, these are three. And if you want to review your uh, entire policies in place, whether the conditions are correctly kept it or not, we can you can actually we can help you out with that. There's a policy review which can be done from our side. Normally, we charge five thousand rupees for this entire policy review. But the people who are there on this webinar, it is a free of cost for you. It's a free of cost for you. All that what you need to do is just just uh, take your snapshot of this uh, QR scan or uh, just scan this code and then give in fill in your details in our uh, um, form. Me and my team will be always there to come back to you. We'll come back to you and we'll help you out in a rightful way. Such that you will have a complete rightful coverage for whatever the premium that you're paid to the insurance company. Okay. And with that, with that, we are coming to a conclusion. So the top three mistakes, the top three mistakes, which normally the business owners does while purchasing the fire insurance policy are, the first one is depending on the banker to conclude, to decide on your submission this is the first mistake. Never ever try to just depend on the banker. Yes, he is supporting you, but it is your responsibility. Your business is your responsibility. You have to make sure that entire assets are covered under your policy, not just the ones which have been financed by the bank. Okay. The second mistake, declaration on the value of the assets under the policy. Never ever declare an under value. Always, always go with the replacement value or reinstatement value, but not the market value. Okay. Right. And the third mistake, don't ignore, don't ignore the warranties, the conditions and the exclusions, which are inbuilt into the policy. Understand them. If at all, any of those things need to be removed, talk to the insurance company, pay that additional premium, but get it endorsed, get it endorsed. And you need any help on all these things. You need any help on all these things. We are always there. We are always there. Just protect your business, protect your company. It's not just your company. There's so many people who are coming to your company and, and it's, it's not just, you, you are actually giving them an opportunity to realize their dreams through your company. Okay. So it is even more responsible for us to actually cover the entire assets of our factory, of our company. Right. Okay. And, uh, the action points which need to be done as a business owner, as a business owner are the first thing, pull out your policy copy, pull out your policy copy, go through the details, go through the details, ask your advisor to come back, then discuss and review with your advisor. Okay. And then discuss with your safety manager in your organization, right? What are the things which are covered? What are the things which are not covered? And do you want any more things to be covered under the policy or any conditions which need to be waived off or which need to be removed or endorsed in your policy? Okay. Discuss, discuss with your safety manager on that and then get all those endorsements done under your policy. Need any help? Me and my team, we are always there. We are always there. All that what you need to do is just dial up this number. Just give a missed call 7569-645-645 or you can also even um, scan this QR code. You will get a form, fill in your details. We'll just get back to you and we'll help you out to have a complete review of your policies. Normally we charge 5,000 rupees for this, but because you are there on this webinar, it is going to be free of cost for all of you who are there on this webinar. Okay. With that, with that, we are coming to the conclusion of today's webinar. That is top three mistakes in purchasing your fire insurance policy. With that, thank you. Thanks a lot for joining us in this webinar. Get more from Malapuram. It is our mission. It is our mission to help out all the people who already purchased policies are planning to purchase the policies to have clarity such that you will have confidence on insurance policies. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for joining us. Come again and uh, be there on our next webinar that is get more from Malapuram. Thank you.